Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex as F1 Stuff and welcome to my very first race review. Uh, it is a virtual race review, but you know, a review is a review. So in one of my previous F1 chats, I mentioned that Formula 1 had launched a virtual Grand Prix series to replace all of the postponed and cancelled races of this season so far. So the first of these races was at Bahrain and it was held last night. Unfortunately, they didn't have many of the current F1 drivers. They only had two. Uh, I will do a quick rundown of the roster right now. So we start with Mercedes. They are running Stoffel van Dorn, their current Formula E driver, and Esteban Gutierrez, their test or reserve driver. He's one of them. He's sort of in the wings with Mercedes. Uh, Ferrari. They are called the Ferrari Driving Academy Esports Racing Team. Bit long-winded. Uh, they have employed Robert Schwartzman, uh, the reigning Formula 3 champion, and uh, due to have driven for, um, I think it's Prima, in Formula 2. However, the season of Formula 2 has not been going ahead. And they also have Dino Boganovic, a karting prodigy and Formula 4 starting driver. Red Bull. Yeah, Red Bull have gone a bit crazy here. Uh, they've employed Sir Chris Hoy, uh, the 2015 LMP3 Le Mans winner, and then also Philip Eng, a British touring car racer. McLaren, they have have the first current F1 driver in Lando Norris, and also Nicholas Hamilton, brother to Lewis, six-time Formula 1 champion, who I believe Nicholas Hamilton does a bit of British touring car racing and some other stuff here and there. Renault, they have their F2 driver, a Gu oh, I'm going to butcher that name, Guan Yu Zhao, and Ian Poulter, PGA golf star. Uh, I've seen his setup, he does on his webcams, uh, he does have some nice Ferraris in the background, bit of a flex, but you know, if you've got it, you're going to flex them. Alpha Tori, obviously still called Toro Rosso as it is on the 2019 game. Uh, they've gone for Lucas Salvadori, a MotoGP rider, and Sadokist, a YouTuber slash streamer commentator, uh, the first internet personality on the grid. Racing points, they have got Nico Hulkenberg, uh, the ex-Formula 1 driver from 2019, and uh, Jimmy Broadbent, a racing streamer as well. Alfa Romeo, again, last year, well, last year they were called Alfa Romeo, officially, or was it Sauber Alfa Romeo last year? No, they were called Alfa Romeo last year, I'm being a bit silly there. Uh, they've employed Cyanide, a streamer, but I couldn't find, couldn't really find a decent picture of, so I chose not to include one, and also Johnny Herbert, an F1 pundit. Haas have employed another pundit in Anthony Davidson, and also Red Eye, another streamer, who I also couldn't find a decent picture of. I've put not sure who he was until I was told that he was a streamer, but I have forgot to change it on the slide, unfortunately. And finally, Williams. They have the second uh, current Formula 1 driver in Nicholas Latifi. This will be his first Formula 1 outing uh, official outing um, past testing as well and for some reason Liam Payne is in there Liam Payne, the X One Direction singer, current solo artist, uh, the the official stream of this did uh, a couple stats of, of each person and they said that he's got a couple number ones albums, number ones and things like that but sure, quite why he's in the virtual Bahrain Grand Prix grid who knows so the qualifying layout it was just an 18 minute session uh, where the drivers were able to go out and do as many laps as they would like to try and get the fastest one uh, so it was a little bit busy a little bit hectic as they first came out of the pits uh, people weren't <laughs> um, yeah it just seemed like people didn't really know what they were doing at the start but after a couple minutes it did uh, start to get underway so we will get into the results of qualifying now. So Philip Eng takes pole half a second clear from Gutierrez with Zhao in the Renault third. Latifi put in a mega lap to uh, near the end to go fourth with Hulkenberg in fifth. Salvadori was sixth with the two Ferraris in seventh and eighth. Sadekist is ninth with Red Eye tenth. Van Dorn eleventh, 1.3 seconds off his teammate and Anthony Davidson twelfth. Cyanide in P13, 
uh, Nicholas Hamilton in 14th, with Poulter 15th. Johnny Herbert only 16th, with Sir Chris Hoy 17th, and Liam Payne was the last of the time setters. A whopping 52 seconds back. Uh, Lando Norris and Jimmy Broadbent failing to set times as they had connection issues and weren't able to rejoin the session. So there were a few incidents in qualifying, there were a few crashes, Liam Payne re retired very shortly after setting his two minute lap time, uh, not entirely sure what happened there as the, the commentary um, team could choose who they were watching but once something had happened if they'd missed it they couldn't like go back to it so it was, it was very limited with it, there were no replays of anything. Uh, Chris Hoy crashed into Van Dorn uh, during qualifying and as well went into a spin late uh, in the latter half of the session. Uh, it was very manic in the closing minute with lots and lots of fast laps coming in. I was thinking of doing like a an update, um, like a minute by minute update, uh, I think. So for the whole 18 minutes there had just been 18 different tables, but honestly it was so manic with trying to keep up with all the race times that were coming in. Uh, to sum it all up, I'd probably say it was a mixture of manic and fast laps uh, made for a cracking 18-minute qualifying. Like, it it really was something to witness. As we move to the race, oh my lordy lord, the race. For those who have not seen it, it was absolutely crazy. Like, utterly, utterly bonkers. Uh, I will have a lap-by-lap -lap leaderboard change just scrolling through uh, whilst I give my thoughts. Um, and have a little chat about it so you're not just looking at one still image whilst listening to me talk because that would quite frankly be a bit boring I'll first give a rundown of the finishing order and then give my thoughts on the very first virtual Grand Prix so as we get into the race we have a victory for the Renault with a Greek oh, don't butcher that name let's start that again so Zhao won for Renault from Van Dorn, 11 seconds clear, with Eng in third completing the podium. Broadbent came back from last on the grid to fourth, with Norris also coming back, uh, coming back from the back to fifth. Uh, more on a bit, more on him in a bit. Late, ay, ay, ay. So Zhao won from Van Dorn, 11 seconds clear, with Eng in third completing the podium. Broadbent came from the back of the grid. Uh, to fourth, Norris also coming back from the grid with Broadbent to finish fifth. More on him in a bit though. Latifi was two seconds back in sixth, with Salvadori and Red Eye close behind him. Boganovic could only manage ninth, with Gutierrez tenth. Holgenberg, after an impressive qualifying, was only eleventh, and Sadekist and Herbert were the last of the lap or of the lead lap finishes. God, there are so many tongue twisters in my script. Jesus. Nicholas Hamilton had uh, and some trev ay ay ay. Nicholas Hamilton had some trouble in the race along with Polter, Chris Hoy, and I'm not too sure what happened to Liam Payne. He was about a lap down in I think it by the fifth or sixth lap, uh, just as they were getting to the first pit stops. But I think the less said about him, the better. Uh, then there were a few technical issues though, with Cyanide, Schwartzman, and Anthony Davidson all not finishing the session. Uh, I don't know whether they crashed and then just left the session or they genuinely just had connection issues. Um, I know Davidson left very, very shortly after the start. It, I think it was after the first or second corner uh, he left. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure exactly what happened. I know, I think Cyanide did crash and then he just left. Uh, and I think Schwartzman also got disqualified as well. But now I'm just going to talk about the race with a little scrolly, um, scrolly, scrolly thing going through, um, so you don't have to listen to me talk looking at a blank screen for a while. So we start with the race being reduced from 50% to 25%, unfortunately. Uh, this was due to Norris and Broadbent trying to get back in the session, and I think the time slot that everyone had was just reduced by them trying to come back in. Uh, it was a bit of a shame, it would have been good to have actually seen a 28 lap race rather than 14, but we still got 14 mega laps uh, of just absolutely bonkers racing. Um, so Jimmy did actually make it back into the session on the formation lap, 
Um, and I think Lando did as well, but shortly after he did leave again and was replaced by an AI for the remain or for a large chunk of the race. So moving to the start, uh, Eng did have a good getaway, uh, but behind him there was a monumental crash. Uh, I think it was Hulkenberg, the Ferrari, maybe Nicholas Hamilton involved as well, I can't quite remember. But it, in all that uh, madness though, Johnny Herbert managed to get up to first from 16th, but he did hugely cut the first corner. Uh, he just didn't even take it like at all and managed to get past Eng for the lead, but he didn't hold on to it though. Penalties, 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 penalties. They were just flying everywhere. We had uh, stop and goes, we had drive throughs, we had time penalties. Literally, I couldn't keep up at all, and nor really could the commentators, but I don't think they were that bothered about it. Eng did get back in front of Herbert before the start of lap two, uh, with a bit of argy bargy pushing him out of the way. Uh, but this is where Zhao made up some places though. He got past Herbert for second on the straight as behind him there was ghosting and just all sorts. I think there was another crash as well at one point. Uh, I did take a lot of live notes and I've just written it's so broken just a lot of madness and that that was live during I think it was on lap two or three that I wrote that down and to be honest that does sum up the race pretty damn well. Just pure madness. Salvadori and his teammate Sadekist ended up crashing into each other on lap 3 as Zhao gets past Eng for the lead. There was a lot of leader changes throughout the whole race and just general overtakes as well. I think after the first 5-6 um, laps as we were getting into the pit stop phase it did sort of settle down. Uh, which is why I'm a bit disappointed as it wasn't a bit of a longer race because if, if it was then we would have actually seen some decent racing for a large portion, whereas it took half of the race for everyone to calm down and not be crazy, and then it then it was basically over, because we only had seven laps left. Broadbent made some huge gains. He was up to seventh, then at third at one point as well, uh, with people starting to pit on lap six, like I said just before, for new tyres. Uh, Eng took a large lead as he was a late stopper. I think his lead at one point was um, about 20-ish seconds uh, at one point before or after people had started to pit. I know on lap one or two, it said he was like a minute and a half in front of everyone, but there was a couple timing glitches. And it was about here that I stopped making my live notes, to be honest. I just wanted to watch the absolute madness uh, going through. Uh, it was also around this point that Lando was able to rejoin and take back control of his AI car, which was, I think, sat in P4 at the time, just sort of poodling around, uh, holding the position uh, for him. So he managed to rejoin. Um, uh, yeah, it was just crazy, utterly crazy. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I really, really recommend you do and just watch it. You you can obviously rewatch it because it's completely free on YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or whatever. It, it's completely free. It's great. Um, but just watch the first time round. Just don't bother doing anything else. Just watch it. And it was absolutely crazy. Then you can definitely come back and, and watch it again for a second or a third or a fourth time man you can then just pick up like all the extra little details that happened uh during it other overtakes you can keep an eye on the the leaderboard see who moves up and down there as i said the the commentators didn't they had a lot of control with what they could do but it wasn't it wasn't there wasn't any replays of what happened and it was over very quickly it, i think there was only an hour and a half session uh that they had Anyway, a huge thumbs up though to the fact that it was free to watch because I, I feel if we had to pay for it and still had to go through Sky because I know it was streamed to Sky as well but I don't know whether you had to pay for that one um, but it was free on YouTube and on Facebook. I think at one point we had 160,000 viewers uh, live on Facebook or no YouTube, sorry, because that's where I saw it. Uh, I know Lando was the second... Uh, highest Twitch streamer at one point with just over a hundred thousand people viewing, um, which it is just bonkers. That's all I have to really say for it. it like it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, yeah, definitely worth watching. Definitely worth watching. Um, they said, they said at the end uh, that their next week, 
they're going to Melbourne. So the virtual Grand Prix series is going to Melbourne um, with obviously the not the Bahrain or not the Australian, not the Baku Grand Prix series coming back in two weeks time for Baku. Uh, I did also watch a little bit of the not the Bahrain GP, the um, unofficial one, which had a bunch of YouTubers, Norris and Latifi were in there as well. Uh, but I do feel like they, they need to get some more actual F1 drivers in, you know, some some more proper names in there and just put them all in a lobby. So there's Verstappen isn't going to be able to make his excuse of, oh, I'm going to have to change my driving style to get used to it. You've got a week till Melbourne and then you have two weeks till the Baku Grand Prix. Easily enough time. You're not racing. You don't have to do anything. Yes, there's some press and other F1 outside related stuff he's got to do, but you can easily find some time to just sit down at a game, learn it a little bit, and at least just hop on for some fun. It was fun. That's that's literally what it was. That's that's all you can really take away from it is it was just so much fun to watch. Uh, so I feel if if we did have everyone in it, more F1 drivers, yes, some of the celebrities in there were cool, they had other people from different sports. We had MotoGP, we had golf, we had Liam Payne. He shouldn't come back. Uh, yeah, it was it was good. It was def it was really good. I was thinking of doing like a championship update because um, they they didn't they didn't show any points or any times uh, or anything like that. I took all the times from the live leaderboard that was on the race. Um, I was thinking of doing the championship though. But I was just thinking that if they do end up changing the the leaderboard for every single race, my championship list is going to get very, very long. Because this was 20 drivers. If they change five or six of them for, for next time, then my table is going to be 26. If they change another five or six of them for next time, it's going to be 30. And I'm then going to have to put it onto like two pages with a lot of zeros. Don't know whether I just wipe off the zeros and just keep all the people that are scoring points. I don't know, but I didn't do a championship update for this one. Mm, I might do for Melbourne. It depends how much they change the, the grid for, but yeah. Very, very positive. Very positive. Um, definitely, though, get some more F1 drivers in. Some some proper, proper F1 drivers. I know Latifi and um, Norris were there. Hulkenberg was there. He was X from last year. Uh, still fairly current at the minute, but obviously not a current F1 driver. Uh, we had some up and comings with Zhao and some of the Ferrari boys. Yeah, wow, that it was something. It was something. But please, if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. It uh, the race. I can't remember exactly what time the race started in the live stream, but the live stream is only an hour and a half, and it covers the qualifying, a little bit in between, and and the race. They did do some post-race interviews uh, with everyone, or some of the people, Zhao, um, and I can't remember how else, how, who else they spoke to at the end. Um, but it definitely worth the watch. So there we go. That is my very first review of the Virtual Bahrain Grand Prix. I will see you guys in a week's time for the Virtual Melbourne Grand Prix. And then in a week's time after that, for the virtual Baku Grand Prix. They may be a bit delayed, as I am having to go back up to uni in a couple of days' time. I will try and record one more video um, today or tomorrow before I go up to uni, which will be the um, Bahrain Fantasy uh, prediction video. I'll try and get that out just after this, probably Wednesday or Thursday. But then I think there will be a small little hiatus whilst I am currently back at university. Well, I only have to go back up to university because I've got to work. Because work aren't letting me go before Easter to pain. But it doesn't matter. I will be back, but there may be a small little break. I might be able to squidge in a F1 chat in between. Who knows? Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.